from this lesson you will learn about the old amazing miniature game and some general knowledge about being a good person in the internet. Hello, hello, this is Ignacy Chevchek Portal Games, this is Portal Games Vlog, this is our experiment, 100 vlogs for 100 days. We are providing you content, videos and hopefully quite the value every single day on our YouTube channel and today we are discussing what? Today we are discussing Naoshima Tactics, the old miniature game that I designed many, many years ago. And uh, because last week we released the Neuroshima Hex Steel Police app in the App Store, it reminded me Neuroshima Tactics Steel Police uh, miniature uh, that we released many, many years ago. And it brought me to the topic of discussing Neuroshima Tactics, what happened with the system, and how it is relevant uh, today. So let's start. Naroshima Tactics was released many, many years ago. Uh, back then, Naroshima role-playing game was extremely popular in Poland. We were selling thousands of uh, uh, copies of uh, books uh, of the Naroshima role-playing game. Naroshima Hex was on fire. Everybody was playing Naroshima Hex in Poland. Big tournaments, big championships. Uh, that was the biggest IP in Poland back then. It's still very, very strong. But uh, back then, when we were releasing Naroshima Hex as a board game, Naroshima role-playing game as a role-playing game, we had 51st State as a card game, like all the different genres, and then we decided let's do miniature game, Neuroshima Tactics, and uh, the hype for the game, the expectations, everything was absolutely superb, uh, the release in Warsaw, in capital of Poland, during the, one of the biggest conventions in Poland was absolutely brilliant, we had so great, great time. Uh, so today I will talk about uh, this game for a bit, and then uh, some things about what happened with the game uh, later. The game was uh, Quite a revolution in terms of the rules. Uh, it was designed by me, Michael Orach, and a couple of uh, less known developers who were very, very good with uh, war games. Uh, so we had a bunch of team. Uh, when you look at the credits in the Hiroshima Tactics rulebook, there is a bunch of people. And it was one of the best uh, periods in the history of the company for me in terms of the brainstorming. There was literally every single day playtesting uh, new factions, new miniatures, new characters, new terrains, uh, and brainstorming over and over and again. One of the best, as I said, one of the best moments uh, in the history of the company. Naroshima Tactics had a couple of uh, super interesting twists in the in the rules of uh, miniature games. Uh, one of them was that because this is a game, miniature game that is set in the post-apocalyptic uh, world, uh, where everything is uh, not in a supply, in a scarce, uh, we decided that each miniature has a limited number of ammunition. So you had your gang, you had your people, and this dude has uh, three uh, bullets, this dude has uh, six bullets, this dude has uh, two bullets, and that's all, because it's post up and you don't have more, because you cannot buy them. And it changes the gameplay tremendously. If you compare uh, these Neuroshima Tactics to War Machine, to Infinity, to Warhammer 40k, uh, in all these regular miniature games is a shooting phase and everyone is shooting like crazy. In our game, when this is a shooting decision, you know, I have only three bullets for the whole game. Do I want to shoot now? Because I don't see this dude uh, back then. Maybe I would go further see him better and then I shoot. So we made this Naroshima tactic super tactical game. There was no automatic shooting phase when everybody was just shooting like crazy. It was just uh, coming closer, coming closer, hiding. And when you see the dude very, very well, then you decide to shoot because you have only a couple of ammo. So that was one big change that made this game super, super uh, tactical. The other change was a living terrain, as we called it. And by living terrain, I mean that when you set up the whole terrain, all these buildings, all these ruins, everything uh, on the table, then we had a special deck of the cards uh, that were features of this building. And players were shuffling these cards and putting one card to each building on the table. And it was a description of what this building was before the end of the world. And it could be the old school, it could be the old fabric, it could be the old uh, pub, it could be anything. And each of these locations, each of these cards, gave the special rule for this particular location. So if you were in the old pub, you could find uh, some old uh, um, radiator, for, for instance, and use it to make a smoke. And if you go to the school, you could find uh, some basement uh, stuff. And if you find a gun store, you can find more ammo. And uh, before the game even starts, you were doing this setup. You were putting these feature cards on the 
uh, on the board and suddenly you have the plan for the game. I need to reach school before he reaches it. I have to stop him from reaching this uh, gun shop. So here I have to put a very, very strong uh, team of just stopping him. And suddenly the whole game, the whole the whole terrain is, uh, is living because it's the uh, things that are happening. And what is more, we have the rule that was called accumulator. It made no sense whatsoever, the name of the, of the uh, of the um, of the rule accumulator during the game if you do some uh, cinematic actions and there was a list of the actions that we give you thumbs up for this action there was a list of these actions if you made one of these actions during the game you get the accumulator points and these accumulator points uh, then you were able to spend to make the terrain act crazy and by act crazy i mean you were able to unlock the ability this building just explodes <laughs> something happened. This is a post-apocalyptic world, you don't know what's happening. And from this building, suddenly mutant rats are just attacking you. And so you never know what's happening because as you know, your opponent is getting these accumulator points. He gets these points for the special, special, special effects. And then when he reaches that limit, now he can spend and things may happen on this, on this terrain in a very, very crazy way. And it was brilliant. It was amazing to have these surprises and these additional tools that only my, not only my miniatures are acting, not only my miniatures are shooting at the opponent, by terrain, different parts of the terrain will act as well as I ask them because something will explode, something will be just ruined, something will open some hideout for some mutants, great, great stuff. So we had a, we had a great feedback from uh, from the players, the tournaments were super amazing. Uh, one of our developers, you know him from our game Legacy Testament of Duke de Cressy and the Cry Havoc and all these new armies for Narushim Hex, Michał Barczak was one of the dudes who was winning these tournaments, who was winning these uh, Narushima uh, tactics tournaments and we spot him and we said, this guy is super smart, we need to hire him. And we hired him, he was developer for Narushima tactics and then, as I said, he switched to the board game department. So, uh, great stuff. Uh, a super successful launch, and then, and then what happened? What's happening, sir? And then what happened was uh, that players started complaining that the uh, miniatures are not looking as amazing as Games Workshop. That our photos of painted miniatures are not super amazing, like in White Dwarf from Games Workshop. Uh, then they were complaining that the, the painting that we are doing on the miniatures is not this top class as a Games Workshop. We were explaining them over and over again. We are not Games Workshop. Games Workshop was founded in the 80s and has these 30 years of experience. We just started. We are learning. Please be patient. Please support us. Please help us. And we were improving our game. We were getting better scouts for the for the mutuals, the mutuals, each new wave of the mutuals were better. Uh, we hired the best and best and better and better uh, painters to make these amazing, amazing uh, uh, versions of the of the miniatures. We found we found a lot of things about the, how to make the best photographs of the miniatures. So we were improving our game, but the players were complaining. They were complaining, then they were still look, look, comparing us with the Games Workshop uh, the quality of the product, and they were saying this is not done. Uh, you sang the game, sang we don't want it, etc., etc., etc. And here we are, 2021. Nobody remembers this game. The game was closed, the game was shut down. Uh, at some point we said uh, we cannot handle it anymore and, uh, and we shut down the project. The cells were getting lower and lower and lower with this whole bad energy on the, on the different forums. And the whole project was shut down. And uh, as I said, you, you guys know, many of you who watch this vlog regularly know, I recorded here in Poland for our Polish audience the series of the videos that was called Kister of Portal Games. And it was an epic, epic uh, series of uh, videos I was discussing every year of, of Portal Games. And in these videos, I was very honest, very transparent. I was telling uh, all the important things that happened in the, in the past. And uh, in this video, I said that Naroshima Tactics is by far my most beloved project that I had to kill. Uh, by far the game that I had the most joy designing and developing and testing and brainstorming uh, and it was very very deep in my heart and I had to kill it just because of the hate in the internet just because of the, all this whining 
players who were saying that it is not freaking freaking amazing, it's just good, uh, you should be better, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And they basically killed, they killed the whole energy for the for the game, they killed the whole energy in the development team. And at some point we said we we give up and, and we are done. And that's uh, one of the saddest mo moments of the uh, of the company. I had to close the whole department, I had to fire people. Uh, they were doing amazing job. They were my amazing, amazing employees. Uh, and we had to make a cut. We had to decide it, 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 it's not moving. It, it, it's terrible. People are still complaining. Uh, and I had to say goodbye to these people. And as I said, the, one of the best moments in the history of the, of the company, creating this amazing miniature game. And then one of the most dreadful moments when we decided we need to shut it down because we cannot fight the and black PR that people are doing and all these haters and trolls who are attacking us on every single uh, forum and the game is done. Uh, I have my miniatures, we have it here in the office. Uh, I hope to play um, at some point with my new employees so they can discover the game and how and how brilliant it was. Uh, but the game is the game is done and nobody can now buy it, nobody can play it, uh, nobody can enjoy it. And uh, that's why let's discuss how it is relevant today. Today it is relevant because the hate over the years in the internet is just getting bigger and bigger. There's more and more trolls, there's more and more people um, commenting in a negative way. I, I saw this particular weekend a uh, quite funny situation. Uh, one of the board game fans, one of we, one of the people who love board games, uh, started a thread on one of the Facebook groups who said, uh, mm, uh, tell me which game uh, sucks uh, and which game you hate. And there was this comment uh, below one of the users on the desk who said, why? Like, why, why, why not start the thread that what game you love? What game is amazing? Why we cannot discuss positivity? Why all these negative things uh, drive attention? Why you want to discuss a game that sucks? And, uh, we are now struggling, as you guys know, we discussed it in the, in the past in a few weeks with the trolls and haters who attack Naroshima Hex uh, uh, app. Uh, we have a problem here, we are struggling. It bothers me a lot, and it reminds me the the old story that I had. I was in this situation. I got the attack of the trolls, and this bad boy you can now only find on eBay or in a secondary shops. It is no longer available. The game was killed. So once again, a message to all of you um, people who are smart. You board gamers are smart. You are intelligent people. Be intelligent. Uh, be nice to each other. Be be kind and don't be a hater in the internet, be the wiser one. Uh, let the morons be the haters and you board gamers be uh, good people. That is a short story from the past of the Portal games. Uh, I think that, do you think they, there is a PDF? I think there is a PDF of the rulebook of Naroshima Taxi. You can somehow find it on BGG or somewhere else. You can Google it for sure. If someone of you knows where is the link, put it in the comments so everybody can discover it. Uh, you can have it for free most likely. Amazing, amazing game. So you can read the rules, you can have fun, you can buy some other miniatures from the, for the Fallout or other game, and have a brilliant time. And when you have the brilliant time with this game, when you will love it and enjoy the games, uh, think about it. How hate uh, killed this amazing, amazing design, and be careful when you hate somebody in the internet because uh, this is real damage. That was my serious message today. So time for some crazy ignorance in the end. Where is my tractor? Guys, we are recording for 100 days, 100 vlogs, uh, providing you value, providing you interesting content, providing you stories behind the scenes, things sometimes that runs. Uh, as always, I always enjoy if you can give us a like, if you enjoy what we are doing, give us a thumbs up, please consider subscribing. For all of you who joined this community a few weeks ago, who are new to the channel, I'm explaining. A couple of months ago, I made a statement saying that board gamers hurt, hate YouTube. And I said I will try to prove it and I will record a vlog for 100 days trying to create the best possible content, interesting stories, interesting runs, and we will see if anyone is watching. And we are counting down. That's why the, each and every video has a lower number, lower number, lower number, because we are counting down to zero. And most likely we'll close this channel because uh, my statement is uh, there is no sense to make a YouTube channel for board gamers because they love to play board games. They don't love to watch board games. They want to play them. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can prove it wrong. Uh, so please give us a like, give us a subscribe, let us grow. And as always, see you tomorrow.